Greetings fellow geeks and welcome to another Geek Moment. My name is Chris Baird and today we're looking at the V78 series switching regulators from CUI. The vertical through hole package version makes a great drop-in replacement for the ubiquitous 78 series linear regulator. Like these linear regulators, the switching regulators need a bypass capacitor, a ceramic type on both the input and output. Hey uh, Brady, what's going on? We're shooting a video here. Oh, hi. Um... Sorry about that, Chris. Uh, I got this project due this afternoon, and uh, I can't seem to get it working. I just burnt my finger troubleshooting it. Holy cow, what'd you burn your finger on? Well, it's this darn linear regulator I got on here. It keeps heating up, and I can't troubleshoot anything fast enough before it shuts off again. Mm -hmm. And it's probably got thermal protection built in. That's why it keeps turning on and off. What are you powering your system from? Uh, two 12-volt lead-acid batteries in series. Well, let's do some quick math. The drop across your regulator is roughly 24 volts. Uh, you're pulling roughly an amp from it. And so you're basically dissipating 24 watts as heat from your TO220 package with no heat sink on it. Is that bad? Well, how's your finger? Uh, blistered. Well, there you go. You have a couple options. Uh, the first is you could put a big heat sink on there. I don't know if you have space on your board to do it. Uh, they're expensive if you're going to go into production. Uh, and it still doesn't address the fact that you're losing, uh, I don't know, 85, 90% of your input power in the form of heat. The other option you have is to switch to a switching regulator. How's that going to help? Well, I was actually about to explain that to the audience. Uh, the regulator type that you would need is a step-down or a buck converter like these V78s. It takes a high input DC voltage and it converts it down to a low output DC voltage using a high-speed switch, typically a MOSFET, an inductor, a catch diode, and a couple of caps with a feedback loop uh, to create that output voltage. And it does it at efficiencies roughly 85 to 95 percent in the case of these V78s. Well, uh, how efficient is this LDO? Well, again, you have about 28 watts coming in and about 4 watts being delivered to your output. Uh, so that's roughly um, uh, 10 or 15 percent efficient compared, again, to 85 to 95 percent efficient on these guys. Wow, that's not so good. Is uh, switching to one of those switching regulators easy? I got a deadline. Well, typically not. Usually if you wanted to build one with discretes, you'd have to respin your board, solder all the parts back on, design the circuit. Uh, fortunately, because you use that TO220 regulator, you could simply desolder that one, solder one of these guys in. Uh, these are really handy and they work great. We've actually used several of these in Geek Moment videos. Really? I don't remember ever seeing them. Well, so they're not always shown. Uh, last summer, for example, when we launched our model rocket, we needed 12 volts to light the rocket motor, but only 5 volts to turn the camera. And so inside the base where the camera was mounted on top of, there was actually a 78, V78 inside there. Hmm. How does it work without generating all the heat of an LDO? Well, switching regulators use an inductor. Uh, it converts electric energy to magnetic energy, and that happens when the high-speed switch closes, current starts flowing into the inductor, the magnetic field in the inductor starts increasing, and the output voltage starts rising. And when the output voltage reaches a threshold that's set through the feedback circuit, uh, the switch opens, and because you cannot instantaneously change the current in an inductor, the current continues to flow, the catch diode conducts, and the output starts dropping. When it reaches a lower threshold, uh, the switch closes again and the cycle repeats. Uh, how fast does the cycle repeat? Well, it depends on the regulator. Uh, these V78s are up to about 800 kilohertz. Oh, wow, why so fast? Well, with a given input and output voltage and a given current, uh, the inductor varies widely with the switching speed. So basically, the faster the switching speed, the smaller the inductor and the smaller the regulator. I see. Uh, where else did you use them? Well, you're actually in luck. Uh, because we're going to do this video, I brought in some examples. You remember this super classic. What's that hiding right there? Uh, how about that? I never even noticed it there. Yep. They're uh, super convenient. They work really well, and I've used them a lot. Uh, this is a board that I'm getting ready for another upcoming video. You can see one hiding right there. This uh, project, you remember this. I did this originally, and I wanted to run 24 volts to each system. Uh, I wanted to run long wires and use cheaper, smaller wire. And so uh, to step that voltage down to 5 volts for the servo motors and for the high power LED, you got a V78. Wow, Chris, I've watched hours and hours of Geek Moment videos on YouTube since they came out, and I've never seen a single one of those parts. Well, ladies, you're in luck. Obviously, our budding young engineer here is single. Brady, you're in luck, too. I actually happen to have grabbed the exact part you need for the video here. This is the 3.3 volt, one amp output version of the V78 switching regulator. Desolder that guy, solder in this one, and you're off to the races. Oh, thanks a lot, Chris. I need to get back to work. Yeah, no problem. Good luck on that presentation. Okay, where were we? Uh, I think you covered it all, Chris. I think it's a wrap. Really? Well, that's great news. In that case, thanks for tuning in to check out our V78 switching regulators from CUI, and be sure to catch us next time for another deep moment. Coffee.